An ornithopter is an aircraft that flies by flapping its wings. Designers seek to imitate the flapping wing flight of birds, bats, and insects. Though machines may differ in form, they are usually built on the same scale as these flying creatures. Manned ornithopters have also been built, and some have been successful. The machines are of two general types, those with engines, and those powered by the muscles of the pilot. Early history of the ornithopter Some early manned flight attempts may have been intended to achieve flapping wing flight though probably only a glide was actually achieved. These include the flights of the 11th century monk Ilmer of Malmesbury and the 9th century poet Abbas ibn Fnaz. Roger Bacon, writing in 1260, was also among the first to consider a technological means of flight. In 1485, Leonardo da Vinci began to study the flight of birds. He grasped that humans are too heavy, and not strong enough, to fly using wings simply attached to the arms. Therefore he sketched a device in which the aviator lies down on a plank and works two large, membranous wings using hand levers, foot pedals, and a system of pulleys. The first ornithopters capable of flight were constructed in France. Jobert in 1871 used a rubber band to power a small model bird. Alphonse Parr copyright Nord, Abel Hero de Villeneuve, and Victor Tatin, also made rubber-powered ornithopters during the 1870s. Tatin's ornithopter was perhaps the first to use active torsion of the wings, and apparently it served as the basis for a commercial toy offered by Pike and Court C. 1889. Gustave Trover copyright was the first to use internal combustion and his 1890 model flew a distance of 70 meters in a demonstration for the French Academy of Sciences. The wings were flapped by gunpowder charges activating a Bourdin tube. From 1884 on, Lawrence Hargrave built scores of ornithopters powered by rubber bands, springs, steam, or compressed air. He introduced the use of small flapping wings providing the thrust for a larger fixed wing. This eliminated the need for gear reduction, thereby simplifying the construction. E. P. Frost made ornithopters starting in the 1870s first models powered by steam engines then in the 1900s an internal combustion one large enough for a person but which did not fly. In the 1930s, Alexander Lippisch and the NSFK in Germany constructed and successfully flew a series of internal combustion powered ornithopters, using Hargrave's concept of small flapping wings, but with aerodynamic improvements resulting from methodical study. Eric von Holst also working in the 1930s, achieved great efficiency and realism in his work with ornithopters powered by rubber band. This includes perhaps the first success of an ornithopter with a bending wing, intended to more closely imitate the folding wing action of birds although it was not a true variable span wing like birds have. Around 1960, Percival Spencer successfully flew a series of unmanned ornithopters using internal combustion engines ranging from 0.020 to 0.80 cubic inch displacement, and having wing spans up to 8 feet. In 1961, Percival Spencer and Jack Stevenson flew the first successful engine-powered, remotely piloted ornithopter, known as the Spencer Ornoplane. The Ornoplane had a 90.7 inches wingspan, weighed 7.5 pounds, and was powered by a 0.35 cubic inch displacement two-stroke engine. It has a biplane configuration, to reduce oscillation of the fuselage. Manned flight. Manned ornithopters fall into two general categories, those powered by the muscular effort of the pilot, and those powered by an engine. Around 1894, Otto Lilienthal, an aviation pioneer, became famous in Germany for his widely publicized and successful glider flights. Lilienthal also studied bird flight and conducted some related experiments. He constructed an ornithopter, although its complete development was prevented by his untimely death on 9 August 1896 in a glider accident. In 1929, a man-powered ornithopter designed by Alexander Lippisch flew a distance of 250 to 300 meters after toy launch. Since a tow launch was used, some have questioned whether the aircraft was capable of flying on its own. Lippisch asserted that the aircraft was actually flying, not making an extended glide. Most of the subsequent human-powered ornithopters likewise used a tow launch, 
and flights were brief simply because human muscle power diminishes rapidly over time. In 1942, Adolbert Schmid made a much longer flight of a human-powered ornithopter at Munich Lane. It traveled a distance of 900 meters, maintaining a height of 20 meters throughout most of the flight. Later this same aircraft was fitted with a 3 HP Sachs motorcycle engine. With the engine, it made flights up to 15 minutes in duration. Schmidt later constructed a 10 HP ornithopter based on the Grunel Baby Leo sailplane, which was flown in 1947. The second aircraft had flapping outer wing panels. In 2005, Yves Russo was given the Paul Tissandier Diploma awarded by the FAI for contributions to the field of aviation. Russo attempted his first human muscle-powered flight with flapping wings in 1995. On April 20, 2006, at his 212th attempt, he succeeded in flying a distance of 64 meters, observed by officials of the Aero Club de France. Unfortunately, on his 213th flight attempt, a gust of wind led to a wing breaking up, causing the pilot to be gravely injured and rendered paraplegic. A team at the University of Toronto Institute for Aerospace Studies, headed by Professor James Deloria, worked for several years on an engine-powered, piloted ornithopter. In July 2006, at the Bombardier Airfield at Downsview Park in Toronto, Professor Deloria's machine, the UTIAS Ornithopter No. 1 made a jet-assisted takeoff and 14-second flight. According to Deloria, the jet was necessary for sustained flight, but the flapping wings did most of the work. On August 2, 2010, Todd Reichert of the University of Toronto Institute for Aerospace Studies piloted a human-powered ornithopter named Snowbird. The 32-meter wingspan, 42-kilogram aircraft was constructed from carbon fiber, balsa, and foam. The pilot sat in a small cockpit suspended below the wings and pumped a bar with his feet to operate a system of wires that flapped the wings up and down. Towed by a car until airborne, it then sustained flight for almost 20 seconds. It flew 145 meters with an average speed of 25.6 a kilometer per hour. Similar tow launched flights were made in the past, but improved data collection verified that the ornithopter was capable of self powered flight once aloft. Applications for unmanned ornithopters, practical applications capitalize on the resemblance to birds or insects. The Colorado Division of Wildlife has used these machines to help save the endangered gunnies and sage grouse. An artificial hawk under the control of an operator causes the grouse to remain on the ground so they can be captured for study. Because ornithopters can be made to resemble birds or insects, they could be used for military applications such as aerial reconnaissance without alerting the enemies that they are under surveillance. Several ornithopters have been flown with video cameras on board, some of which can hover and maneuver in small spaces. In 2011, Aero Viriment, Inc. announced a remotely piloted ornithopter resembling a large hummingbird for possible spy missions. Aero Viriment, Inc., then led by Paul B. McCready developed in the mid-1980s, for the Smithsonian Institution, a half-scale radio-controlled replica of the giant pterosaur, Quetzalcoatlus Northropi. It was built to star in the IMAX movie On the Wing. The model had a wingspan of 5.5 meters and featured a complex, computerized autopilot control system, just as the full-size pterosaur relied on its neuromuscular system to make constant adjustments in flight. Researchers hope to eliminate the motors and gears of current designs by more closely imitating animal flight muscles. Georgia Tech Research Institute's Robert C. Michelson is developing a reciprocating chemical muscle for use in micro-scale flapping wing aircraft. Michelson uses the term entomopter for this type of ornithopter. SRI International is developing polymer artificial muscles which may also be used for flapping wing flight. In 2002, Krista Wolf and Peter Norden of Chalmers University of Technology in Sweden, built a flapping wing robot that learned flight techniques. The balsa wood design was driven by machine learning software technology known as a steady-state linear evolutionary algorithm. Inspired by natural evolution, the software evolves in response to feedback on how well it performs a given task. Although confined to a laboratory apparatus, 
their ornithopter evolved behavior for maximum sustained lift force and horizontal movement. Since 2002, Professor Theo van Holten has been working on an ornithopter which is constructed like a helicopter. The device is called the ornicopter and was made by constructing the main rotor so that it would have no reaction torque at all. In 2008, Schiphol Airport started using a real-looking mechanical hawk designed by Falconer Robert Musters. The radio-controlled robot bird is used to scare away birds that could damage the engines of airplanes. In March 2011, scientists and engineers at the Festo Bionic Learning Network introduced a robotic smart bird, based on the motion of a seagull. The smart bird weighs only 450 grams and is controlled by a radio handset. On video, its flight appears remarkably realistic. In 2014, Clear Flight Solutions, a spin-off of the University of Twente, started making artificial birds of prey for airport as well as the agricultural and waste management industry and ornithopters as a hobby. Hobbyists can build and fly their own ornithopters. These range from lightweight models powered by rubber band to larger models with radio control. The rubber band powered model can be fairly simple in design and construction. Hobbyists compete for the longest flight times with these models. An introductory model can be fairly simple in design and construction, but the advanced competition designs are extremely delicate and challenging to build. Roy White holds the United States national record for indoor rubber powered, with his flight time of 21 minutes, 44 seconds. Commercial free-flight rubber band-powered toy ornithopters have long been available. The first of these was sold under the name Tim Bird in Paris in 1879. Later models were also sold as Tim Bird. Commercial radio control designs stem from Percival Spencer's engine-powered seagulls, developed circa 1958, and Sean Concad's work in the late 1990s to present day. The wings are usually driven by an electric motor. Many hobbyists enjoy experimenting with their own new wing designs and mechanisms. The opportunity to interact with real birds in their own domain also adds great enjoyment to this hobby. Birds are often curious and will follow or investigate the model while it is flying. In a few cases, RC birds have been attacked by birds of prey, crows, and even cats. More recent cheaper models such as the Dragonfly from Wowie have extended the market from dedicated hobbyists to the general toy market. Some helpful resources for hobbyists include the Ornithopter Design Manual, book written by Nathan Cronister, and the Ornithopter Zone website, which includes a large amount of information about building and flying these models. Ornithopters are also of interest as the subject of one of the events in the Nationwide Science Olympiad event list. The event entails building a self-propelled ornithopter to exacting specifications, with points awarded for high flight time and low weight. Bonus points are also awarded if the ornithopter happens to look like a real bird. Aerodynamics As demonstrated by birds, flapping wings offer potential advantages in maneuverability and energy savings compared with fixed-wing aircraft, as well as potentially vertical takeoff and landing. It has been suggested that these advantages are greatest at small sizes and low flying speeds. Unlike airplanes and helicopters, the driving airfoils of the ornithopter have a flapping or oscillating motion, instead of rotary. As with helicopters, the wings usually have a combined function of providing both lift and thrust. Theoretically, the flapping wing can be set to zero angle of attack on the upstroke, so it passes easily through the air. Since typically the flapping airfoils produce both lift and thrust, drag-inducing structures are minimized. These two advantages potentially allow a high degree of efficiency. Wing design, if, in the future, manned motorized ornithopters cease to be exotic, imaginary, unreal aircraft and start to serve humans as junior members of the aircraft family, designers and engineers will need to solve not only, for example, wing design problems but all the problems involved in making them safe and reliable aircraft. Some of these problems, such as stability, controllability, and durability are inherent to all aircraft. Other problems, specific to ornithopters, will appear at the first time. Flapping wing design problem is only one of them. An effective ornithopter must have wings capable of generating both thrust, the force that propels the craft forward, 
and lift, the force, perpendicular to the direction of flight, that keeps the craft airborne. These forces must be strong enough to counter the effects of drag and the weight of the craft. Leonardo's ornithopter designs were inspired by his study of birds, and conceived the use of flapping motion to generate thrust and provide the forward motion necessary for aerodynamic lift. However, using materials available at the time, the craft would be too heavy and require too much energy to produce sufficient lift or thrust for flight. Alphonse Parr copyright Nord introduced the idea of a powered ornithopter in 1874. His design had limited power and was uncontrollable, causing it to be transformed into a toy for children. More recent vehicles, such as the human-powered ornithopters of Lippisch and Emil Hartmann, were capable powered gliders, but required a towing vehicle in order to take off, and they may not have been capable of generating sufficient lift for sustained flight. Hartmann's ornithopter lacked the theoretical background of others based on the study of winged flight, but exemplified the idea of an ornithopter as a bird-like machine, rather than a machine that directly copies birds' method of flight. The 1960s saw powered, unmanned ornithopters of various sizes capable of achieving and sustaining flight, providing valuable real-world examples of mechanical, winged flight. In 1991, Harris and Deloria flew the first successful engine-powered remotely piloted ornithopter in Toronto, Canada. In 1999, a piloted ornithopter based on this design flew, capable of taking off from level pavement and sustained flight. An ornithopter's flapping wings and their motion through the air are designed to maximize the amount of lift generated within limits of weight, material strength, and mechanical complexity. A flexible wing material can increase efficiency while keeping the driving mechanism simple. In wing designs with a spar sufficiently forward of the airfoil that the aerodynamic center is aft of the elastic axis of the wing, aeroelastic deformation causes the wing to move in a manner close to its ideal efficiency flapping wings increase drag and are not as efficient as propeller-powered aircraft. Some designs achieve increased efficiency by applying more power on the downstroke than on the upstroke. In order to achieve the desired flexibility and minimum weight, engineers and researchers have experimented with wings that require carbon fiber, plywood, fabric, and ribs, with a stiff, strong trailing edge. Any mass located to the aft of the impenit reduces the wing's performance, so lightweight materials and empty space are used where possible. In order to minimize drag and maintain the desired shape, choice of a material for the wing surface is also important. In Deloria's experiments, a smooth aerodynamic surface with a double surface airfoil is more efficient at producing lift than a single surface airfoil. Other ornithopters do not necessarily act like birds or bats in flight. Typically birds and bats have thin and cambered wings to produce lift and thrust. Ornithopters with thinner wings have a limited angle of attack but provide optimum minimum drag performance for a single lift coefficient. Although hummingbirds fly with fully extended wings, such flight is not feasible for an ornithopter. If an ornithopter wing were to fully extend and twist and flap in small movements it would cause a stall, and if it were to twist and flap in very large motions, it would act like a windmill causing an inefficient flying situation. A team of engineers and researchers called Fullwing has created an ornithopter that has an average lift of over 8 pounds, an average thrust of 0.88 pounds, and has a propulsive efficiency of 54%. The wings were tested in a low-speed wind tunnel measuring the aerodynamic performance, discovering that the higher the frequency of the wing beat, the higher the average thrust of the ornithopter. See also, Endomopter, Flytech Dragonfly, Gyroplane, Helicopter, Human-Powered Aircraft, Insectothopter, Microair Vehicle, Micromechanical Flying Insect, Nano Hummingbird. Rotary Wing Aircraft, Stilstov VSTOL, References. 35. Prospects of Flapping Wing Aircraft. Conversion of Glider into Flapping Wing Aircraft. HTTP, origin.net slash. Ornithopters, Further Reading, Chronista, Nathan The Ornithopter Design Manual. Published by the Ornithopter Zone. Muir. Thomas J. Fixed and Flapping Wing Aerodynamics for Microair Vehicle Applications. Virginia, American Inst. of Aeronautics and Astronautics. 
ISBN 1-56347-517-0, Azuma, Akira. The Biokinetics of Flying and Swimming. Virginia, American Institute of Aeronautics and Astronautics 2nd Edition. ISBN 1-56347-781-5. Deloria, James D. The Development and Testing of a Full-Scale Piloted Ornithopter. Canadian Aeronautics and Space Journal 45. 2, 72 Euro 82, Warwick, Douglas, Brett Tobalsk, Donald Powers, and Michael Dickinson. The Aerodynamics of Hummingbird Flight. American Institute of Aeronautics and Astronautics 1 a Euro 5. Web November 30, 2010. Crouch, Tom D. Aircraft of the National Air and Space Museum. 4th ed. Lilienthal Standard Glider. Smithsonian Institution, 1991. Bilstein, Roger E. Flight in America 1900 a Euro 1983. First ed. Gliders and Airplanes. Baltimore. Maryland, Johns Hopkins University Press, 1984. Crouch, Tom D. Wings. A History of Aviation from Kites to the Space Age. First ed. New York, W. W. Norton and Company, Incorporated, 2003. Anderson, John D. A. History of Aerodynamics and its Impact on Flying Machines. Cambridge, United Kingdom, 1997. External links, General Interest, the French Ornithopter website, Why Ornithopter Flygen, The Ornithopter Zone, A Paper on Ornithopter Wing Design, Magic the Gathering Database, Specific Projects, A Robot that Flies Like a Bird, Creation of a Learning, Flying Robot by Means of Evolution, University of Toronto Ornithopter Project, University of Arizona Ornithopter Video, Valentin Kiselev, Russian Researches, University of Florida Ornithopter Project Recent Research Efforts for Ornithopters, Design Engineering Article about UTIAS Project, BYU Students Fly Tiny, Bird-like Ornithopter at Competition, Lawrence Hargraves Ornithopters A Euro State Library of NSW, Delft Fly A Euro and MAV Ornithopter by a Team. Of Delft University of Technology and Wage and Engine University, Calculation of Bird's Engine. Real Future of Yours Fly Mech Property, French, a Euro Yves Rousseau Flight, FAI Certified, French, a Euro Jean Marie Delis Avial, French, a Euro Georges Fraser Copyright Ornithoptery.